Good morning, I'm Nick Goldschmidt, winemaker for Goldschmidt Vineyards, Forefathers in Boulder Bank, and today we're going to talk about red wine style. Hopefully you've seen a couple of the other video clips that we've done for you, so maybe you'll follow along with this one brief in a relatively easy manner. I'll just give you one quick chart that we did first, and that was the one about ripeness. If you remember, a while back we talked about the time period of flowering to harvest and how grapes ripen with acid increasing and at this point in time called veraison which is when the berries change color this is when we have an increase in sugar sorry yes an increase in sugar an increase in flavor and then a decrease in the tannin feel and obviously where these three things meet is where we want to harvest flavor ripeness sugar maturity and tannin maturity and I talked about how tannins move from green tannins to dusty tannins, to dry tannins, and to ripe tannins. But if we talk about wine style or red wine style, I did one earlier on white wine style when I talked about warm fruit and cool fruit. We can sort of do the same thing when we think about red wine style, but red wines are a little bit more complicated. You think about how Pinot Noir styles are. They tend to be a little bit more fruity, forward in the mouth, easy to drink, supple, but at the same time very complex. Versus a Cabernet from a mountain, which can have a lot of tannin. So completely different styles of wine. So how can we sort of visualize that as we choose wines to drink with dinner or choose wines to enjoy as an aperitif? One of the key things that I find as a winemaker is berry size. We talk a lot about berry size. Pinot Noir and Merlot can have a relatively large berry in any particular year, and I hate to talk in metric, but we always talk about about 1.1 or 1.2 grams per berry. So relatively large berry, not this big, but relatively large when we think about a Cabernet berry which is about 0.95 grams or less than a gram per berry. So you can think about the tannin ratio to pulp with a Cabernet is you can have a lot more tannin in a small berry variety like Cabernet than you would in a big berry variety like Pinot Noir or Merlot. So those things are also going to play a factor in how wines turn out. So if I was to draw on here the evolution of red wine style and break it up into, and hopefully you can follow this because this is all about your palate. No one can tell you what's a good wine in your mouth, only you. You're the only one that has your tongue and your flavor, flavor sensitivity characteristics in your mouth. So when I talk about amount of tannin versus the wine's complexity, hopefully you'll follow along. So a wine that has more complexity and wine that has more tannin. And the way to think about tannin is when that wine comes in your mouth, tannins are usually on the side of your tongue or towards the back of your tongue. And it varies from varietal to vineyard to soil. So again, a Pinot Noir grown in the Russian River is going to taste dramatically different to a Pinot Noir down in the Santa Lucia Highlands or down in the Eden Valley, the Edna Valley area. And in complexity, we can talk about things that go to make up complexity. Is it, has it got wood on it? Does it have a long time in barrel? Does it have a long time in bottle? And does it have different fruit characteristics that lead itself to become more complex? So wine, just generally, when you, when you put a wine in your mouth and you think about its l amount of tannin, and I'm going to be really generic here, and I, hate, I apologize to the producers of Pinot Noir, but this is sort of where I put Pinot. I think Pinot, Mouthfeel wise has a little bit less tannin than most of the other varietals and I do agree that Pinot does have a lot of complexity but in this particular comparison I'm using that as a, as a place filler. If we think about Syrah and Zinfandel, these varietals also have the sort of same level of complexity but they have a higher degree of tannin. Syrah tends to have a bit more chalky tannins or spicier tannins, maybe unripe tannins if you think about it versus say a Cabernet but that's just the, the style of what Syrah is about. Zinfandel has a thinner skin, bigger berry again. Again, Zinfandel is more spicy and peppery, similar to what a Syrah would be. I would put Bordeaux at this level. Same sort of tannin feel as a Pinot Noir, but a high degree of complexity. And California Bordeaux, when I say Bordeaux, I'm talking about Petit Verdot, Cabernet Franc, but of course Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot up in this quadrant. And over the last 10 years, there's been a real movement of California Bordeaux in this direction. And I'm not talking about a decrease in complexity. 
I'm talking about an increase in suppleness and roundness of tannins. And of course, for those that saw me earlier, my first degree is in engineering, so I'm kind of a visual guy. So this is actually a three-dimensional drawing. I hope you can bear with me. And if we think about the coolest climate fruit that you could possibly imagine, and I know this well because one of the things I did as a, as a young intern in the horticultural area was work on a black currant machine harvester. Now that's the greenest, most peppery, spicy thing that you can ever eat. So to me, the coolest that you can be is black currants. Black berries, black berry character, be very close to it. Then we get to sort of black cherry, blueberry, red cherry, loganberry, raspberry, and then the, the warmest red fruit to me would be like a strawberry. And I'm talking about fruit characteristics, I'm not talking about things that are in wine. So black currant would be the coolest flavor component that I could imagine, and strawberry would be the reddest or ripest flavor compound that I can imagine. So if you can think about this three-dimensionally, unfortunately, Pinot Noir tends to be a little bit more of the red fruit, blueberry, red cherry, and perhaps black cherry, whereas the Bordeaux varietals will tend to be more of a black cherry, blueberry as well, but maybe a little bit more towards the blackberry, and in some instances uh, can even go beyond that in terms of its spicy character. So when I say that California Bordeaux has been moving this direction, I'm not saying that they're decreasing in complexity. What they have been doing is moving away from the black currant and blackberry and more towards the black cherry, blueberry, and perhaps even some of the red cherry characters and trying to make those Bordeaux varietals and wines a little bit more fleshy, suppler, and easy to drink. So hopefully that makes sense. We've really broken down some of the varietals that we sell as red wines, Pinot Noir being a little bit lower in terms of tannin feel, Syrah and Zinfandel being a little bit higher in tannin feel, and then where we are in terms of Bordeaux, trying to make those wines more supple, rounder, and wines that have actually more silky tannins. And I'll talk a little bit about that when we talk about site-specific winemaking in one of our other little clips. Thank you very much.